And now we want to ask you about tonight with ageism in Hollywood and the panel that we have together, just the message that you want to share and we're shining a spotlight on the issue. So how do you feel about being part of it? I'm so gratified that they asked me to join because I have uh, a lot to say about the subject of ageism, not only in our society, but particularly in our business, and for women especially. I mean, it's just, it's really hard. You know, everybody, uh, a lot of studio heads and producers seem to feel that once you're past the babe stage, there's absolutely no reason to put you on screen do some great movies early in my career, like Poltergeist. I played a strong woman. I've played a lot of strong women. And I don't see why women over the age of 55 can't be major screen heroines and strong women. I mean, Meryl Streep aside, and mm -hmm. you know, God love her. Well, actually, um, other than having experienced ageism myself, I'm here primarily for my clients. Not so much in the industry anymore. Things have changed enough that it's not a big deal. I still have clients who refuse to give their age. Mm -hmm. It's embedded in them. I'm never going to, I'm not even going to be able to mention their names tonight in association. Um, but mostly within the media, mm -hmm. it's very hard because um, they insist on mentioning the age of everyone. Some magazines uh, insist on mentioning, the, mentioning them. Some magazines, and sadly, even magazines that are supposed to be championing um, the elderly or the retired, it's not going to be hard to figure out who I'm talking about, um, have actually called me and said, oh, I'm sorry, your client's too old for our demographics. Wow. Um, I've been told, uh, I was told one time that Bob Hope was too old or not, you know, for their audience or that Carol Channing was too old for their audience and I was once even called and told that Florence Henderson was too old for their audience despite the fact that their magazine was the sponsor for her talk show. Don't mess with Miss Brady. Yeah, no, really. No, no. no. Well, we're excited to open the conversation tonight, and I know the whole panel is really excited to be here, so we're going to shine a light on something that definitely needs to be talked about, so we're honored to be a part of it. And we love all your clients. We know them all, but we won't name them either, but we know them all. I'm very lucky. I think every one of my clients has a, a stigma of being either a legend, an icon, or a cult icon. By 2030, there'll be more people on this planet over 65 than under 10. So that changes everything. Mm -hmm. And our entertainment, our media, our culture is so impacted by what we see, what's reflected. And if we are missing an entire generation of people that are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, which is the normal life expectancy of a human now. Betty White, 90s. Betty White, yes. <laughs> She's a trendsetter, <laughs> always has been. Then we're missing huge elements of, of what life really is on this planet, what it means to, to be part of every culture, and not just even the American culture. Absolutely. How you doing, everybody? We are here with Ashton Applewhite, the chair rocks a manifesto against ages, and we're very excited to have you here tonight. And will you tell us just a little bit about the panel and the message that you're trying to share? Well, I'm thrilled to be here in the epicenter of youth culture, Hollywood, where people are generally terrified to even mention the A word, mm -hmm. um, to actually confront discrimination on the basis of age and the tremendous toll it takes personally and professionally. And you have some amazing women here with you tonight, so we're very excited about the panel being a part of it and trying to shine a light on it as well. So I know you're a big activist and spokesperson, so we appreciate you being here and helping put everything together. We have to share the mic, but it also opens the conversation, like you said, here in Hollywood. So it's, we're excited to be here. We're excited to be a part of it. So Yeah, I think it's kind of historic. As far as I know, it's the first time we've, you know, shine a light right on it. Absolutely. It's Maybe the first of the first of many. I and think so. I mean, it's sold out instantly. You know, people people know that getting older is different from the way it's portrayed in popular culture, in advertising, in the media, and you know, it's and that's why that's why the room is full. That's why people are ready for the conversation. It's you know, exciting. so it's just great to be here to talk about that ageism and sexism, and you know, and perhaps your viewing audience will. You know, there will be people who might hire me who know that I don't really intend on playing the overweight grandmother. We got four million followers on Twitter, so this is going to be posted right up there. Oh, Twitter, you all talk to me. Let me know oh, if I'm doing okay for my. It's, you know, at Miss Lynn Whitfield, and you just come on and talk to me and tell me I'm there. I don't know. 
What do you think? And we, we love you. You know we love you. All the way back to Charles. We're going to pause for a selfie because this is going to go out to all our fans. It's unbelievably important issue that needs to be brought to the light and really explored by as many people who are willing to talk about it um, as possible. Because it absolutely exists. It's real. And it's real, you know, I think it's real in, in, in all walks of life and all businesses. Um, but it's especially, or maybe not especially, it's just uh, prevalent in, in, in our business, in Hollywood. And um, I think it's especially difficult for women, although the writers went on strike and got $70 million for, you know, the ageism that was coming at them, so the older writers. And, you know, it, what it, I was thinking on the way over here, I was thinking that, you know, it's so detrimental to society as a whole to compartmentalize older people um, who have been proficient and uh, given us so much of their creative expression in whatever field they're in and then to shut them down as they're older. It's just, um, it's a crime. And how do you feel with your message you want to share tonight? Well, you know, I'm not one to shy away from the truth. And so I have been experiencing ageism, honestly, probably since I was about 30. So it's, I'm glad we actually saw each other at the Dolly Show because one of the things that someone like Dolly Parton represents over and over and over is that women of a certain age still generate a ton of interest, mm -hmm. a ton of revenue for the companies they work for or themselves, but they're so rare. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons we love Dolly so much and we love Cher and Bet and anybody who's still doing their thing is because we respect all the time they've put into it. So one of the reasons I'm speaking out about ageism is comedy is one of those areas where you actually need someone to have done it for a while so they can be good or learn from their mistakes and you know I've done 23 televised stand-up comedy specials more than any comedian we've seen everyone <laughs> we've seen them all <laughs> I hear they're very good you I mean Guinness the word Booker on the world street record. you had four in one year and that's the right Book of world record. And you know what it took me until I was 55 to do that to set a record so one of the things that's really kind of unfortunate is ageism in Hollywood or probably any field they like, punish you for being experienced so for me what I run into is okay you guys um, I've done all these specials I'm ready to do X Y or Z and they just go yeah yeah, we're gonna go with someone younger and mm -hmm. it hurts every time because then we no. go, well that's okay but why and they're just like uh, because of the data and I'm like what what data are you referring to so you know as I'm on an 80 city tour 80 cities in one year I think I've lost my mind all I can tell you is the people that come to my shows they pay their hard-earned money mm -hmm. and you know they're not all 19 or 20 in right. fact I would venture to say mostly they're older than 18 or 20 and they're out there and people my age are consumers and Someone, you know, a 55 year old, maybe not conventionally beautiful like you two and Dolly. Um, you know, I got to work harder and jump higher, but I don't like someone prohibiting me from making a living because of my age. I mean, I I do feel drop it. Drop it. Drop it. I can't because I can't afford that logo. Shit!